ओंकार प्रधान रूप गणेश Shakuntal for that soulful beginning uh, to a session which promises to be even more soulful as we end this wonderful two days of uh, the Goa Art and Literary Festival. Um, good evening everybody. I, um, thanks, I thank Vivek and I thank uh, Galf uh, for giving me this opportunity. It just came about a couple of days ago so it kind of overwhelmed me because <laughs> This is something that's so deep and so, um, you know, old and so full of uh, thought and wisdom. So it's, it's going to be a session with a lot of, like, big names. Uh, we have Shanta Gokhale. We have Jerry Pinto. We have two translators in one book. I think this is the first time I'm coming across two translators in one book. I'm not sure about all of you well-read people, but that itself makes it really exciting. Uh, and why there are two translators, Jerry is going to tell you over uh, what he has to um, uh, talk to us. Uh, but then we have Santa Tukaram. Santa Tukaram, who is, um, you know, Maharashtra's the Bhakti poet of the 17th century. For those of you who have, who may be um, uh, not knowing too much, you will get to know over the next um, 40 minutes. But yes, this is the poet who brought uh, the common people of Maharashtra together and the, the name of God. Because like, very much like the saint, poet saints that he followed, um, you know, right from the 13th century Naneshwar and then Namdev and uh, other bhakti poets, he spoke in a language known to the people, and that's what made the difference. And um, the, 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 what the thoughts that he brought out um, through his abhangs uh, has given birth to a tradition in, in uh, Maharashtra, which I think is one of the most phenomenal and the largest religious gathering of the world, the Varkaris. The Varkaris who march to the holy city of Pandharpur, where their the idol, the idol that is being worshipped through these abhangs, is Vithal, a form of Vishnu. And uh, so I'm just saying this because there might be a few people in the audience who are um, new to this whole concept. And they walk from different villages across, you know, literally over 10 to 15 days. This is on the 11th month, 11th day, uh, uh, Ekadashi of of um, uh, Ashad, which is in the monsoon. So through the green, the verdant la landscape, the plateaus and the hills of Maharashtra, they are coming with, you know, singing these abhangs in tune. And this is called the Varkari tradition. The, the travel is called Vari. And we are going to hear a lot more. So be prepared, because as Jerry talks, we are all going to dance out of this hall in the same Varkari mood as we go on to the Stuti choir, right? So. Um, 
over to Jerry, but I'm sure I'm going to ask the question that most of you would like to ask Jerry. Jerry, how did Tukaram come to you? Thank you. Thank you, Peter. And thank you very much for, uh, for, uh, for, that, uh, for that beginning. Okay, uh, you know that I don't like stages. Bhakti, bhakti is eye level. Bhakti is in your face. Bhakti is in your heart, right in front of you, face to face with God. Okay, so there can be stages. Uh, this this story begins in the most odd place in the world, in a gym in Mahim. Okay, so I'm on one treadmill, and on the next treadmill is Neela Bhagwat. And normally you know gyms, right? Gyms have a dinchaka 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 soundtrack going on on the, on the stereo system. That day, the gods decided the, uh, the stereo system would fail. And because I have a classical musician next to me, and because she's a socialist, and I know that she will sing anywhere because she believes everyone can sing. She says, if you speak, you can sing. And this is a classical musician speaking. I turn to her and say, Neela, the sound system has failed. Sing. And Neela starts. And Neela sings, Mungi Udali Akashi. Tine Girile Suryanshi. And the great thing about the Indian classical tradition music is that the line does not evaporate. The line circles you. The line comes back again and again. And each time that line comes back, right, you find another image bursting into your head. Mungi Udali Akashi, an ant flew into the sky. Tine Gilile Suryanshi, she swallowed the sun. And immediately you're beginning to think, what is it? What, what happened here? How did the sun get swallowed? And you think of Muktabai as this little girl. And she's kneeling down perhaps. And she's playing with an ant. And she's picking up that ant gently because these are a saint's fingertips. And she's closing one eye and eclipsing the sun. Mungi udali akashi, tine gili le suryanshi. Or maybe it is actually the feeling of epiphany. When God arrives, you melt down. Lava and sunlight and gold flowing inside you. That's what, it ha what happens when you swallow the sun. Mungi udali akashi, tine gili le suryanshi. And at the end of it, I turned to Mukta, I turned to, uh, to Neela, socialist, atheist, and I say to her, Neela, this is so beautiful, I want to read it. And of course, I'm lazy, so I want to read it in English. I don't want to read it in Marathi. So I say, you know, who's translated these women? And she says, nobody. And I say to her, Neela, we should do this. Let's do it together. You choose 50 poems, and we'll work on it together. And I've said this to everybody. I've said this to Hindi poets. I've said this to Urdu poets. I've said this to Marathi poets. And all of them have said, yes, 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 what a great idea, and walked, wandered away into the sunset. They don't want to do the work of actually choosing the poems. Neela is different. She turns up with 50 poems. And we begin a bhakti mark together, walking this tradition. First came joy, and on the morrow, hard on our heels, a visit from sorrow. Just as we settled down to grieving, sorrow announced that she was leaving. Joy and sorrow, what's the difference? Both are sisters, born of ignorance. Muktai tel sangya, self-born the soul. Standing like a banyan, erect and whole. I so loved doing this. And then suddenly, I flashed back to a moment when I was, I, I was a, when I started wanting to write poetry, right? I wanted, I wanted very much, I wanted the life experiences of a poet. I wanted Maud gone to reject me. I wanted to see a dead body of a young man in a, uh, in a field in Flanders and write like Wilfred Owen. And I had none of those experiences, and I had no idea that I could write out of my experience, that that could be poetry. But when I started to, I began to imagine, I, I, began, I read somewhere that Auden or Spender, one of those white boys, had said that every poet should have thousands of lines of poetry in his head. And of course, I had studied poems in school. So I set myself this tra target. I would walk from Nariman Point by the sea, because it's the sea. 
And the sea is also part of that marg of bhakti. I would walk by that sea right up to the hill because hills are also part of bhakti. And there I would stop at Malabar Hill where the Parsis expose their dead to the vultures because death is also part of it. And that I kept reciting and reciting. And it was all English, beautiful English poems pouring out of me. And suddenly at one point, I'm running out of poems. I can't think of a poem to say next. And out of nowhere, from the 8th standard, Tukaram returns. Je ka ranzale ganzale. And that will be read to us by Preeta. So, as you can see, this is going to be a high octane session. So. <laughs> Be prepared. Um, J. Karanzale Ganzale is what brought Tukaram to Jerry. And we can't thank, who do we thank more? Santa Tukaram or do we thank Jerry for bringing us all together on this platform? Uh, so let's start with some music because this is, uh, p for me uh, personally, this is, these are the verses that come to me, come to my mind in this soulful voice of Pandit Bhim Sen Joshi. And uh, I mean, there is no parallel to that and what you feel when you hear that. But this is going to be a similar evening and over to Shakuntala who is going to say it uh, as in the original. So this has been a very, very interesting experiment, okay? So when we first decided, sorry, I've just broken the thing. Uh, so Vivek said, let's bring Goa into this. So we know we have Marathi. Jerry is Goa, yes, but. I said uh, okay, bring. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so what happened was, um, so we said we have Marathi, we have English, but here we are sitting in Goa, where is Kokni? And so in a matter of like literally 24 hours, we were assisted by one of Goa's finest poets, writers, journalists, uh, but unfortunately, he couldn't be here because he was sitting in Bombay. And when we said, Shailen, you have to do this for us. You have to do this for Galf. He said, I cannot say no. I can't be there. He would have been in my place and probably making this much, you know, much more interesting. But he sent us these. So we just sent him the verses from the book. And in no time, we had some of the most wonderful Kokni um, translations uh, to the verse. So what Shakuntala is going to do now is she's going to sing for you in Kokni, her, uh, uh, Shailene's trans uh, translations in Kokni. So those of you who have heard J.K. Uh, Ranjale Ganjale in Marathi, I'm sure it's going to be at the back of your mind. But for those who haven't, enjoy this and we'll go through three languages in the next few minutes. Yes, I'm adding to Preeta's language, uh, the way she expressed Goa and uh, Goan music. And uh, Goan music has uh, got a different flavor. And this song has got a little painful side, little happiness, a little different type of uh, uh, sensation, I must say, uh, and uh, for which I have added the pure Goan music to that and a uh, little bit of uh, Ravindra Sangeet. <laughs> so, and again it is in the Raga Des. Je asad dukhe speedest, je asad dukhe tanka jo manta aple. Je asad dukhe speedest, tanka jo manta aple. Vol kuchata manis baramon. 
म्हणून वळखूच बार म्हणून पोलवचा देव ताजे भीतर पोलवचा देव ताजे भीतर जे आसा दुखी स्पीडीस तांकां जो मानता आपले वळखूचा तो मनीस बार भायर भीतर माव भायर भीतर माव लोणी तसेच मन सज्जनाचे तसेच मान सज्जनाचे जो अपंगुळ आशिल्ल्याक लेगीत जो अपंगुळ आशिल्ल्याक लेगीत धरता आपल्या काळजा लागी धरता आपल्या काळजा लागी जे आसा दुखी स्पीडीस तांकां जो मानता आपले वळखूच तो मनीस बर म्हणून जे दाखयता दया भुरग्याचे at which you come in now we are all going to do tukaram together she is going to recite a line you are going to repeat it after her it does not matter if you don't understand it remember in our tradition the meaning was secondary to the to the resonance to the echo to the sound so release the sound inside you there's sound waiting inside you to be released so you will release it she will read a line je karanzale ganzale you will repeat it i'm going to do it once je karanzale ganzale je karanzale ganzale goa do me proud je je kar One. Je kar ranzale ganzale. Je kar ranzale ganzale. 
त्यासी म्हणे जो आपले तोची साधू ओळखावा देवा तेथेची जाणावा मृदु सभया नवनीत ताईसे सज्जनाचे चित्त जासी अपंगिता नाही त्यासी धरी जो हृदयी दया करणे जे पुत्रासी त्याची दासा आणि दासी तुका म्हणे सांगू किती तोची भगवंताची मूर्ती सो दोज ऑफ यू हु आर जस्ट गेटिंग इन टू इट यू विल डिस्कवर फॉर युअर सेल्फ दॅट द वर्स इज फॉलो द लास्ट लाईन्स इज तू का म्हणे and that is been the uh, you know the tag line the same the as kehta kabir <laughs> yeah it's kehta kabir so tu ka mhane uh, so beautifully put before jerry uh, um, tu ka says by uh, dilip chitre so tu ka says like an english version of uh, so you can see the beauty of translations uh, as we go by so now jerry is going to say his translation okay uh, so just uh, before so jeka ranzle ganzle surfaces right and i begin to understand something about uh, the way music the way words attach themselves to you right so ranzle ranj ranjo gam ranj is rust ranzle ganzle the worn out the rusty those nerves uh, sounds sound like rust rubbing against each other you know like those aluminum kazang that go up and that's why it stayed with me inside my head j ka ranzle ganzle to si mane jo apule so and it's a beautiful and you know so many things that bring it back for instance one of uh, one of gandhi ji's favorite uh, poems was um, वैष्णव जन तो तेने कहिए जे पीड पराई जाने रे वैष्णव जन तो तेने कहिए कॉल ओनली हिम अ वैष्णव हु अंडरस्टैंड द पेन ऑफ अदर्स ओके एंड नॉट ओनली दैट ही टेक्स दम ही अंडरस्टैंड दैट पेन ही एम्पथाइज विथ इट बट ही डस नॉट अलाउ हिम सेल्फ टू फील प्राइड एट वॉट ही डज when he tries to help them such a beautiful feeling and the same feeling was here and so uh, we started translating i'm going to read you my translation and my eyes are not <laughs> keeping up with the rest of me how do you tell a saint look for such a one as takes for his own the overborn the outworn and the forlorn know this man is an image of god his mind is soft and but as butter inside and out to his heart he holds the low born the base born his slaves and his children are as one to him tuka says i can go on and on this is the embodiment of god oh. yeah. wow. so as we said this is an interesting evening because we have two translators and we will also read for you shanta gokhale so just a word about shanta gokhale before i actually um, read it out shanta gokhale as you prita mane sangu kiti tochi shantata chi murti <laughs> <laughs> so uh, shanta gokhale again bilingual writer uh, theater critic books she awarded and you know one of those well respected uh, writers and literateurs of maharashtra so she and jerry have shared a very close friendship but i after reading her translation i'm just going to say from what i picked up from the book that shanta's claims that her and her approach to the translation where she, where she remained close to the original but jerry ha- 
thought a little differently and we are going to hear from him how come they had two translators. I, he himself thought it was a collaboration, but somewhere they, they realized it was not. They were two translators, right? So this is Shanta for you. He, he who says, these are mine, of those in torment and pain, recognize him. He's a saint. Recognize God's presence there. Much like butter, the virtuous man is soft in every part. Clasping closest to his heart, the neglected, the outcast. His love makes no difference between son and servant, says Tuka. Why say more? He is the divine incarnate. Wow. So Jerry is going to tell us how there were two translators. Okay, uh, so fundamentally, I, uh, you know, I always I, on Instagram I call myself Mahim Ka Jerry, uh, and because when I started out my my journey, uh, I found Mahim small and constricting. I remember once I was eight years old and I uh, and someone had opened a tank, uh, a little water tank, you know. So I went to peek into the water tank, and then I was going home three more minutes, four more minutes, and by then someone had called up my father and said, "Your son is doing dangerous things like peeking into open water tanks. Please look after him." <laughs> I, it's like, and I thought, "Is like Big Brother is watching me everywhere in this little Mahim?" And so I decided that I would, when I got into college, I would go as far as possible from Mahim before I fell into the sea. And so I went to Elphinstone College, where I met uh, transformative souls like Amruta and other people. <laughs> and um, and. But over the years, I began to realize that Mahim was drawing me back. And I began to find Neela Bhagwat is in Mahim. Shanta Gokhale is just in Dadar. So round, like, I mean, this was a wonderful trio that, you know, that had been put together by geography, right? So, and, okay, here's the story. Says Tuka came out by Dilip Chitre, right? And it came out and it was a big thing. And my gosh, sometimes I look back and I can't remember when there was not a Says Tuka. It was just, it's just so important. And uh, I was telling Shanta this one day very excitedly, and her face was kind. <laughs> like a kind face, like the kind kind of face you make when a child comes and says, I just saw something, that's just about what, what, what wonderful thing. And you're thinking, yeah, yeah, you think it's wonderful. So I said, uh, I thought, I stepped back and I said, Shanta, uh, do you think you could do better? And she said, with one hand tied behind my back. Okay. <laughs> So I thought, oh, man, serious cojones. Like, like, look at that, right? It was great. Uh, and then I'd done this, and, you know, she was involved in the process, and then lockdown happened, and then I, and, you know, uh, and we decided we'd do Tukaram together. I said, you know, I reminded her, one hand tied behind your back, lady. Let's try it now. And my idea was we'd do it the way we, Neela and I worked, which was I would do the translation, show it to Neela, Neela would say, <laughs> and which meant no, or she'd say, hmm, which meant yes. Maharashtrians are not given to big expressions of delight and whatnot. You know. uh, when, uh, when they really think something is nice, they say, harkat nahi. <laughs> That's like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay. Even the story of, of Vithala is a very Maharashtrian story. So who is Vithala? Vithala? Vithala is Vishnu. But why is he called Vithala? Why isn't he called Vishnu? Because at one point, Vishnu or Krishna, whoever, arrives in this part of Maharashtra and remembers that in some previous birth, he had promised this devotee of his that he would appear to him, and he'd forgotten. So he thought, OK, now is the time. I'll go and I'll appear to him. And he goes and he appears to this uh, devotee. But the devotee is serving his parents at that point, you know, looking after them. And he turns around and says, here's God. God is turned up, right? And uh, what does he do? He says, wait. And he picks up a brick and throws it at God and says, stand on that and wait. I'll come back to you when I've finished my parents. I think only a Maharashtrian could do that. OK? And what does the God do then? He gets onto the brick and he stands like this. This is a position in which Vithala is always seen, but it is a position no other god takes up. You will never find in Indian iconography a god standing like this, because no one else has been treated like that. No other god has appeared and had a brick chucked at him and told, stand there. So Vita, Vita, Vita is 
brick, brick wala god. Stand on the brick god and wait for, for uh, your bhakt to look, to address you, okay? So such a wonderful, uh, and so we started together and then I did the first one and I wandered across. I mean, I sent it to Shanta and said, what do you think? And she said, this is not how we will do it. And Shanta is very gentle and very sweet and intractable as a mountain, okay? And there are times when you just recognize that there is a feminine force against which you have no recourse. Boy, just say, okay, how are we doing it then? And Shanta said, you will write yours and I will write mine. And I said, I thought, I said, that's not quite how. And after like gasping for like a fish for a bit, I said, okay. Then I called my publisher and I said, uh, you know, uh, that thing I told you about, I have a long suffering publisher called Ravi Singh, who does all my books regardless of how like wild and you know, and bully they are as ideas. And of course also stabs certain ideas in the back and leaves them to die, but, and I have a little bit of my heart. Like with all our friends, you know, there are those little festering moments where you think you killed that book. Anyway, but never mind that. We're talking about Tukaram today. So uh, I told him, you know, we're doing it this way. And I thought he would say no. And then I would go back to Shanta and I'm so sorry. He said no. <laughs> Shoot over his shoulder. He said, that sounds like a good idea. And I thought, whose friend are you? Traitor. But it's okay. I mean, I said, okay, let's, let's do it. And it began to work really well. I mean, in a sense, uh, it gave us both liberty to approach uh, Tukaram in our own way. And isn't that Bhakti Mark? Fundamentally, isn't that what Bhakti Mark tells us? Your way. Find your way. And to be a Varkari, there are three things that are required. Three simple things. First, believe in the equality of everyone. Everyone is equal. Second, no meat. Third, no alcohol. Now two out of three for me is not bad. I will leave you to imagine which is the third that prevents me from being a full-fledged Varkari. And you got it wrong. I have to tell you that also. But you have it wrong, but it's okay. Misunderstanding is part of the deal, okay? Like it's, it's woven into the fabric. So for me, uh, starting out on, on, on this journey, I had been, I realized, on the journey for a long time. Every night I would read a, a Tukaram poem before going to sleep. Okay, sometimes I'd read it aloud to my long-suffering sister who has suffered through many, <laughs> you know, sort of iterations of things being read out to her and you know, uh, <laughs> half asleep. But I, I enjoyed it. And then finally we came to this process when which, and then we realized we'd have to write two translators introductions because like there are two separate translations and two separate marks by which we came. She was steeped in Tukara. They learned, I mean, Mar Marathi kids, right, Preeta, most Marathi kids learn Tukaram in the way that we, I mean, you know, Christian kids will learn uh, the Memorare. They learn and they recite it, they sing it. Everyone's looking a bit shifty, <laughs> as if to think, yeah, maybe, nah, I don't know. <laughs> but this is the myth. And there is, of course, Sant Tukaram, the famous film. And there is, of course, also the Sant Tuk the Tukaram comic. Damar Chitrakatha, from which we get, we all get a lot of our learning about our country from Amar Chitrakatha, and I think that's okay, right? It's fine. You have to start somewhere, and Amar Chitrakatha is as good as any. I don't know if I've answered the question you posed, but I think that I've said enough for now. We'll ask them. Yeah. Are they satisfied with the answer that how two translators came about? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Basically. Uh, a woman told me that's how it's going to happen. <laughs> okay. No, the difference. Okay, so fundamentally, okay, I grew up with A.K. Ramanujan in my life. A.K. Ramanujan was, if you have not heard of A.K. Ramanujan, no, I forgive you. I really forgive you. It's all right. But don't let it happen. Go find out. Okay, he did, he reinvented what 
our understanding of our own texts are. That glorious one, yeah, the Basavanna one that he did. Armando Menezes also from the Menezes Khandan. Yeah. But I have to I will one day buy, get that book from you and read it, but right now it's not part of my history. So I remember reading this, like this poem almost as a as a as a mistake. I don't even know where it happened. Because I don't think I was really terribly that much interested in Basavanna, but they see long hair and big breasts coming and say it is a woman. They see big muscles and they say it is a man. But what of the soul? What of the soul, O oh Lord of the meeting of rivers? Is it man or woman? Oi! Huh? Totally oi! Meaning, like if you are part of the LGBTQIA plus 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 community, if you are respectful of that of those of those uh, attempts at re-understanding gender, this is a statement asking you, where did you get your binary from? Where did you imagine that we could be like this? Where could we be pigeonholed? And so I began to read the rest of it, and oh my gosh, oh my blinking gosh. Okay, because there are moments when the poets address their God with rage. In my uh, and to follow, who swallowed the sun, there is a moment when Zani says, oh, "You, I, to her God, when your body is dragged, your dead body is dragged through the market, I will spit on it." And then there is another one where she says, And what she's saying is, I will give you a ram, just kill my man. <laughs> and when you're, when you're done with that, take my father-in-law. <laughs> and then kill my mother-in-law. And that pesky brother-in-law. And my sister-in-law. And then you and I, alone in the night. How rich and lovely is this relationship, right? So to understand how one could have a 360 degree relationship with God, okay? You have only to go to the Bhakti poets. Soera Bai, she says, God came and I fed him Panchamrut and he belched his satisfaction over me. God belches over you. Okay. It is so, so beautiful and tactile and embodied, richly embodied. And we forgot because we would not be in this state today if we had remembered that this was our tradition. That this, this all encompassing way of looking at the world was something that we invented, that Bhakti invented and gave us. And Tukaram was part of that movement. Tukaram was part of this movement that said, do you need a priest? Do you need a temple? Do you need anything other than the name? Tell me what you need. So beautiful. How can you, how can you not have read Ramanujan and not have read Jerry Pinto? <laughs> Did any of you imagine that you were coming into a spiritual kind of a session <laughs> to only la to laugh your way through it? <laughs> Jerry, your answers are so good, we forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, um, you know, as I myself went through the verses and then a bit of recollection and something that has always struck me when I've heard these verses is that God is addressed as the mother. Oh. So, so though you uh, you have Vithala, which is Vishnu, and which is the male form of God, uh, the saint poets uh, address them as their mother. And one of the most beautiful word uh, in Marathi is Mauli. So, obviously, we know of Ma, which is as 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 beautiful. But Mauli is a word that you use in. Uh, you, you hear in the bhakti um, uh, the lingo. 
So here we have this beautiful uh, thing where I will read it in Marathi. And then we will go through, again, we will go through uh, the two um, English translations. And then Shakuntala with her beautiful voice is going to say the Kokni. And from there, Jerry takes you into another realm of this thing before we close up and move to Stuti. Right? So, yeah. So all this in 10 minutes. Shakuntal. Uh, no, I just want to, um, as, a, as a personality, Jerry Bab, I think I met him first time when, you know, I remembered Baki Bab Borkar singing Pandurang. Peace inside inner peace vade alta di lai maka palta di pai jai sukh thandai panuranga kai banchalena kai ghev chalena kai banchalena kai ghev chalena sukh dukh pisai panuranga 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 I see that pandurang inside him. So I just felt like singing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Shakundala. That was such a beautiful addition to what we were about. OK, so let us read Tu Maji Mauli, Tu Maji Sauli. Tu Maji Mauli, Tu Maji Sauli, Pahato Vatuli Pandurange. Tu Maja Ekala Vadila Dhakula. Tu maza apula soera jiva. Tu kamane jiva tuja pashi ase. Tu kamane jiva tuja pashi ase. Tu jani osa sarvadisha. You are my mother. You are my father. Panduranga. You are the shade in which I rest. You are the one I wait for. You, Panduranga, friend, revered elder and younger brother, your family. Tuka says, my life is with you. The rest means nothing. So uh, I just want to finish that Ramanujan uh, thought. Uh, that, sorry, uh, that for me, uh, when I was making my way to Tukaram, the assisting um, voice was Ramanujan's. And it was a moment, uh, you know, this is the, one of those moments that I so deeply regret. I was walking down the road in uh, South Bombay, and Giv Patel was walking up to me, another great poet and painter and playwright. Giv Patel was walking up to me with a strange man next to him. And I said, hi, Giv. And he said, oh, Jerry, uh, this is A.K. Ramanujan. And we are going to see Nisim Ezekiel. <laughs> Three poets like that, okay? And what is my response? I said, oh, wonderful. Um, uh, Rama, uh, Mr. Ram Ramanujan, I'm a great admirer. And I went away. <laughs> I should have just dropped whatever I was doing and gone after them and said, can I just be a fly on the wall just to listen to you talk? Of course, they might have been discussing chai and where to go for biscuit and anything. But still, three of them and I refused. And this is, for me, is a, a definition again of the bhakti mark that every moment is an opportunity that is lost if you do not live it fully right if you do not like just fundamentally witness yourself in that moment just stay there witnessing the mad dance of your ego okay that's i think that's that's for me what all this is about Tumaji Mauli, Tumaji Sauli, of course. But me, me Maji Mauli, me Maji Sauli as well. Thank you, Jerry. <clears throat> you are my mother, you are my shelter. Pandurang, I wait in longing for you. Brother of mine, older and younger. You are the beloved keen of my soul. Says Tuka, my life is with you alone. Beside you, all else is barren. Yeah. And now, we, and now if you we, sing, everybody on your feet. Yeah. This is the moment when we start so, dancing. So now we have. Come, come, down here. Yeah. 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 
five minutes and we're out. So before we dance out, let me just let me just thank let let's because we're going to be dancing out and Jerry has told us let's be in the moment. That is for us, this is a drop of bhakti over ourselves. <laughs> Put down your bags, put down yourself. Someone asked me, uh, how can you do this? And I said, it is very simple. Abandon dignity. <laughs> it is as simple as that. Dance like no one is watching. Dance like it is only the movement of you and God who gave you a body and who let you move in this moment. Let yourself go, okay? Let's go. Come down, Prita. Okay, can we have a beat? One, two, three. But okay, let me just say. Okay, finish this. Yeah, finish this. Yeah, finish Thank you, Dev Guru.